Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is your election day. You know what? Please be sure to vote. What they say about the early bird. Photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by my one-on-one 45-minute live mentorship calls and 15-minute recorded rapid-fire critiques. This is the first time that I've offered something like this, and I'm honestly not sure how long I will continue to offer them. The October slots are almost fully sold out for the 45-minute live calls, but there are still some available. Now, I went ahead and uploaded a raw, unedited sample of a one-on-one mentorship call as well as a rapid-fire critique. Head on over to fronosphoto.com slash mentorship so you can see that call and what it's all about, as well as check out the FAQs, the testimonials, and sign up. Now, I look forward to being your mentor. First up, Apple has announced their iPhone 12s, and guess what? They have the best cameras yet. Like always, they show you amazing photos taken with the camera and try to make the pitch that these cameras are on par with what I like to call real cameras. So don't get me wrong, in the right hands, my hands, you can get fantastic results even with an iPhone. Shit, you can get fantastic results with a Pentax too, but who knows where you can actually get one of those to put in your hands. I don't think they sell those anymore. The big news for me was the announcement of the Apple Apple Pro Raw format. Finally, Apple is going to let you shoot raw with the native phone app and take control of your images. Now, the website says that this is coming soon, so there is no time frame, but hopefully it's sooner rather than later. I'm coming. I hope Apple decides to run one of those campaigns that looks something like this. I shoot raw. You know, because, because I own the trademark. Oh yeah, remember this, the future of photography? Yeah. It's computational. Next up, Canon has dropped not one, but two new cameras on the world. Uh, uh. First, they rolled out the M50 Mark II, which makes some minor incremental improvements over the Mark I. Now, I will say that I love the M50 for vlogging because it had dual pixel AF, it was small and compact, and let me do a good enough job. Now I say good enough job because it wasn't exactly the sharpest video in the shed, but it did get the job done, especially when I was running around Paris and doing the weather report from the top of the Eiffel Tower. Windy. Some of the new additions are improved AF, including IAF for video, vertical shooting support, which is kind of dumb, but hey, TikTok. Ooh, look at me. I'm a TikTok star. I'm Charlie D'Amelio. Oh, I'm a classical dancer. Follow me on TikTok. They also added webcam capabilities for when you are done dancing on TikTok and you want to move over to your OnlyFans. And they also didn't add much more than that. This camera is priced perfectly at $5.99 for the body only, but it's an M mount. And I think that the M mount is going to be killed off by Canon soon. Me out of my misery. And for the second camera, do you remember a few weeks ago when I made fun of Canon's commercial for their monocular camera that was being kickstarted in Japan? Now let's jump to 56 seconds into the video where we see a woman looking creepily through the camera. I know exactly what she's looking at. Yeah, yeah, that video. Well, there's good news. It's coming to America. To America. And I have one right here. Isn't it great? Isn't it the greatest thing that you've ever seen? No. Canon says that it designed the PowerShot Zoom to appeal to hikers, bird watchers, and anyone who enjoys gazing. Yeah, he must work out. Oh, at nature. Nature, that's right. not gazing at anything else. The only specs that you really need to know about this camera is with a click of the zoom button, it goes from 100 millimeters to 400 millimeters. And with another click, it goes to a digital zoom of 800. There's optical image stabilization, lock on tracking, USB-C charging of the internal battery, and it doesn't include anything to protect the front element. One job, Canon. This is not very protected. That's what she said. Nonetheless, I'm totally going to do a review on this and we'll see what I end up gazing on. Now, if you like it, you will be able to grab one soon for $299. Look, you can't even tell that I shoot raw because it's so stealth. Store.fronosphoto.com. How can he see me? 
And finally, Nikon has announced two entirely new cameras that are so new, unique, and groundbreaking that they needed to change their tried and true naming scheme. Introducing the entirely new from the ground up Nikon Z Space 6 2 and the Nikon Z Space 7 2. Uh, uh, I know, uh. groundbreaking, like I said. So, what makes these cameras so groundbreaking? Nothing! Absolutely nothing. Oh, phone call. Hello? Oh, it's Madeline K. Oh, you want me to shut up and tell them the specs? Why don't you be quiet respectfully? First things first, Nikon said that they listened to the feedback from their users when deciding what changes to make in these new cameras. Come on, Nikon, you knew from Jump Street. We were actually Jump Street. What you should have done and you didn't do it, that's a fail on you. Harsh. All right, enough of that, let's get to the specs. The body design and shape is, for all intent and purposes, exactly the same. They both have the same sensors as before, but both bodies miraculously found a way to squeeze in a second card slot. Now you have one CF Express Type B and one UHS-2 SD card slot. Slots everywhere! On top of the two card slots, you now have Dual Xpeed 6 processors, which hopefully the added processing power somehow sticks a rocket up the ass of the autofocus and brings it out of the dumpster to a place that is closer to Canon and Sony. The added horsepower is supposed to cut down on the blackout between shots, help you focus in lower light, give you a larger buffer, and shoot more frames per second. Both cameras add IAF tracking for humans and animals when recording videos. Both the 6.2 and 7.2 will get 4K 60, though the 6.2 will get it via a firmware update sometime in 2021, and the 7.2 will have it built in with a slight crop. Speaking of firmware, you now will be able to update these cameras wirelessly via SnapBridge, and they've also added USB be charging while you're using the camera. Basically, the changes that they made should have already been there for the initial launch two years ago. And at the very most, these cameras should have not been called the two, but they should have been called the S. Phone again? Jesus. Hello? Oh, it's Madeline. Oh, tell them about the grip. Are, are you sure you want me to tell them about the grip? Okay, all right. Hey guys, Madeline? She has strong hands. Oh, not that grip. Nikon finally announced a fully functional vertical grip and battery pack with buttons and dials, and it's called the MB Pen 1.5. No, it's not. And will set you back $399, but it will not work on the Z6 or Z7, just on the 62 as well as the 72. So that gets a womp womp. And finally, the Z Space 62 will be available in December at $1999.95. And the Z Space 7.2 will hit the shelves in November for $29.99.95. Is it a worthy upgrade? For some people, yes. For others, no. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Polinfronos, photo.com. See ya.